We're going to talk a little bit about how to check a relay today and we're going to concentrate on the Bosch style 5 pin relay. The reason why we're going to go over this relay in particular is because this is by far the most common relay that you're going to find in the transit, the trucking and in the automotive industries. But before we get into the specifics of the relay, we really should understand why there is a need to use a relay. Well, the reality is that it's, it's pretty simple. This, a relay gives us the ability to control a high amperage uh, circuit using a low amperage uh, control source. So what you're going to find as we get into the explanation of the relays is that the reality is that there's two different sides uh, or two different circuits inside of each relay. So why don't we take a look at some of the specifics. When you flip the relay over, uh, one of the things that you will notice is that there are five pins. Uh, one of them is an 86, you have an 85, 87, 87A, and pin number 30. The 85 terminal, usually this is where we supply ground to the, uh, to the relay or a negative voltage. The 86 is the positive and that's our signal. The 86 pin actually is like our switch. That's our signal. That's the one that when you receive this positive uh, uh, voltage coming to it, the relay will then energize and then it will activate and execute the, the command, uh, which will be to power up uh, uh, or complete the circuit on a high amperage uh, outlet. 87 would be going out to our load. Uh, our load can be the headlights, they can be, it can be a motor, it could be anything that we are powering up with the actual relay. So anything we're powering with the relay is really known as our load. 87A can also go to a load, but I put an asterisk next to this because 87A is not always used. So it's kind of an optional um, a pin for us to, to have uh, with our relays. And finally, the last pin is pin number 30. Pin number 30 is our power source. Now, it's important for you to understand that on pin number 30, this is that high amperage power coming into the relay, and it's not there to power the relay, but the, the power source at pin number 30 really is there to power the load that's at the end of 87. Here's your 85 and your 86 terminals. And what you find here in the middle portion of it is a coil. Now, a coil, as we know it, is pretty much a wound wire around an iron core. And if we supply it a ground or negative voltage and we supply it a positive voltage to each end of this coil, what's gonna happen is that this coil is gonna become energized and we are gonna create a magnetic force. Now, this is what's called an, electromagnet, an electromagnet. And really, that's what we're doing. We're, we're creating magnetism and we're using this magnetism to be able to flip this contacts back and forth from 30 to 87 and 30 to 87A. Now, one of the things that I also want to point out is that every relay has a schematic on it. You should be able to grab a relay, doesn't matter which one you're working with, and every relay, as you look around it, you should be able to find and identify the schematic for that particular relay. Now, as a rule, all schematics are always going to show you any components in their de-energized uh, position. Okay, so in other words, what we're looking at here, and I drew this on the board, uh, is the schematic of a typical Bosch relay, and this is the way that our contacts lie when the relay is de-energized, when we have no power in there. So when we have our ground to um, 85, that's constant. If we have a switch, let's say a, a switch in the dash to turn on the headlights, uh, or this could be a, a starter motor switch. We really wouldn't want at our ignition switch, you know, 300 amps w worth of power because there's always more danger for fires and, and so many other safety issues that come along with it. So on our switch, on our key switch, we typically have low amperage. Well, when we go ahead and we turn the switch, if this relay is powering up our starter motor per se, when we turn the switch, we send power to 86. So this 86 would somehow be connected to some kind of switch whatever turns or activates the component that we actually want to power. So when we hit this uh, 86, we already have ground. Now all of a sudden we get a positive voltage in here. We create this electromagnetic force. And once we have that magnetism, this, this little uh, contact is gonna swing over 
to 87 and connect 30 to 87 when it's energized. If we de-energize the relay, then the pin is going to come back to 87A. So as a general rule, when the relay is de-energized, you're going to have continuity between 30 and 87A. When you energize the relay, now you're going to have continuity between 30 and 87. Now, a question that may come up is, well, according to the way that this schematic is drawn, it almost seems that when we power up the relay, it would push the contact over and swing it over to 87. Well, the reality is, again, remember that a schematic is not a direct representation of the way that things mechanically or physically move. It's more intended to show us how it works, you know, from, the, from an electrical standpoint, okay? So remember that this creates a magnetic field. This coil in here creates a magnetic field. So the only thing that this magnet could do would be to attract, okay? So bottom line, 85, 86, they become energized. You get power between 30 and 87. You de-energize the relay. Now you have power between 30 and 87A. The last thing I want to point out on this, on this front is that if you notice, there's really no connection between 85 and 86 and then the other three pins that are 87, 87A, and 30. So that's what I was talking about at the beginning, that you really have two separate circuits in here. So this circuit, 85, 86, really activates the relay. And then the other three activate whatever your load is, or whether it's a starter motor again, it could be a horn, uh, it could be headlights or, or in anything along those uh, lines.